Ah, hope. All right, let's make this quick, because you know I love to talk. I know things are really depressy wessy out here, okay? It's not looking good, folks. It's, uh, it's looking quite terrible. But I just wanted to offer a few things, just, just some offerings, means you can take it or leave it. Don't even bother. Whatever you want, do your thing. It is okay to be sad and depressed and unmotivated and exhausted and all the, quote, negative feelings. Your feelings aren't wrong or bad. They're just your feelings. They're information. You don't have to learn from them right away. You can just sit with them and let them do their thing. Even if that means you're going to work and you just tell people, I'm not okay, but I'm just gonna do my job, okay? I'm just doing my job. So that's just being honest. You can be honest about how you feel. It's all good. I would like to encourage you though, to not wallow and sit. Here's what I mean. The world is always on fire. These things, were happening before you became aware of them and will continue to happen whether you forget about them, die, whatever, at least in our lifetime. Feeling upset and down is okay, but you're still alive to feel it. You're still here, if you're in this part of the world, comfortable enough to not have to be feeling it directly. So I would implore y'all to appreciate that privilege and not look at it as a negative, but use it to your advantage. Cause you can take breaks when you need to. And then you get back on the horse. Sorry, I'm gonna be saying a lot of these weird platitude things. Just go with it. Resilience is a muscle. It's a muscle that you have to build. At least that's how I like to think about it. Because again, shit is always gonna be hard. Things are always gonna happen, but you have to be able to experience the shit, feel the feels, do whatever you need to process them and then keep going or keep going and processing them or all the things at the same time. Nobody said it was gonna be easy. It's ashy as hell, trust me. I had to learn from a very early age that people were not trustworthy. Seeing the worst of people. Despite all of that, something in me has always still loved you bitches. <laughs> and still wanted nothing but the best for you because in my heart of hearts, I do believe that when people have their needs met, not just basic needs, but actual emotional, social needs met, it does something different for them. When people feel like they have others that can show up around them. This isn't for everybody, but I'm talking to the majority of people. Right now, there's a lot of information out there and it can be overwhelming, but if you know what you stand for, what you're about, what your values are, and you like to live those values. It doesn't really make speaking about important issues to you difficult. That also requires you having your own moral compass, your own code of ethic, your own love ethic. A lot of you are looking to people to speak out and say things about the Congo, for people to speak out and say things about Palestine. I understand that when you have a platform, it's important to use it. But I also want y'all to manage your expectations about the people that you look up to. Not all of them are as principled in certain regards as you would maybe like. And it sucks, I get it, but you can't control them. Yes, Amy Schumer needs to stop talking. Oh my God, I just want her to stop talking. But I'll look up to her, firstly, well, that's whatever. But also, any of the other celebs, I like Beyonce a lot. I haven't heard her say anything and I, I'm, I'm fine because I know what I'm gonna do in my own life and I know what I have done. So yeah, it is frustrating that more people with larger platforms aren't using their power and privilege, the little power and privilege they have with their larger platforms, that's greater than you maybe, to say the things but that just means more of us have to use a little that we have to do it. I've never been someone that's good at waiting for someone to give me something. I'm just like, girl, if I wait for you, I will die. Let me go do it myself. So I think a lot of us, hopefully your eyes are being awakened to understand that like, you can't rely on a lot of these leaders to do their quote unquote jobs. A lot of stuff is a little too corrupted for that. Past the point of no return in some cases. So it's up to you and the people around you because you can't do it by yourself. That's also a large burden to bear. It's up to you and the people around you to figure out ways to enact changes that aren't going to be 
the biggest ones because another thing that I think all of us need to do is humble our brows and our egos. You have to do this work if you care about this work of abolition and liberation and all of these things, equality, all of this, apparently. If you care about this, you have to understand that environmental issues, all of this, real systemic change takes a long time. I have made peace with the fact that I'm probably not gonna be alive to see any of the stuff or most of the stuff that I would like to see changed in my lifetime. But I wanna keep going anyway because it's not for me. It's for future people. As my homie Todd, he's not my homie, I don't know him, but Todd May says, those that are distant from us in time, the people that I have not yet met and will never meet, I still love and care about them because they are people. And so I want to do what I can while I'm on this earth to make it better for them, knowing that it's not going to be a huge change in my lifetime because it can't be because it takes a while. It takes time and that's okay. That allows me to feel less significant in the world. And that should be a good thing because when you feel like you can change the entire world on your back, that's too much pressure, girl. Mm, that's too much pressure. That's too much weight and that's too much centering of yourself. It's not about you. It's about you being a part of the whole and what you can do with your part to make that whole better. To make that whole better, Jesus Christ. <laughs> As Alpha Wayman says, you know, hope is a tool. It's a strategy. It's a defense mechanism. It takes a while to build it up. A lot of us are academic and we read and we're cerebral and we like to learn, but we also, I think, maybe could take a bit of, of lessons from some sort of spiritual practice of sorts. The world is gonna keep breaking your heart. It, it, it's just going to keep breaking your heart. And it shouldn't harden it. It should make it more malleable, softer. I see the images coming out of Gaza, talk with my friends. I learn more and I'm more and more upset but I've been learning about this more consciously for the last couple of years and on the back burner just because I grew up Muslim and knew Arab people. So there's a matter of factness with the way I speak because I know that my guilt and sadness, though useful to ignite me, doesn't do anything for people in Gaza right now. My action does. And so what does action look like for y'all? Is it learning more? Is it going to a rally this weekend? Is it supporting certain businesses? I'm organizing a group of pals in a Shania Twain. Let's go girl. Down to the rally. <laughs> gonna organize a little movie night. And at the movie night, we're all gonna make some phone calls. You know, like what are some things that you can do? How can you turn your hangouts? into little bits of, of actual practical action. And how can you take breaks? Watch things that you enjoy, listen to things that you enjoy, write, read, sit in silence, play with your cats, hang out with your friends, post funny memes, and then post serious shit. <laughs> take care of yourself, because remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. But if any of you wanna actually continue to do this work of fuck this world, I wanna change shit, then yeah. This was, this was for you. Any resources or anything like that, I've been posting them on my Instagram, uh, just cause YouTube, I don't trust it. So I've been posting things on Instagram and you can find highlights that I've pinned on there. And yeah, I'm sorry a lot of y'all are learning about all the genocides in the world, but they've been going on and it's okay that you didn't know, but now that you know, what do we do? So yeah, take care of yourselves y'all.